very, very impressed with the scores today. It's not easy, as you know, it's windy, it's cold, um, to shoot under par, uh, it's just fantastic. So well done. I mean, I know this is a special group. Uh, and we've known that since the beginning, but still to go out there and play 18 holes yesterday in delayed conditions and then today with no rain, but uh, with a lot of wind. So well done. So um, I thought, uh, first of all, just welcome to everybody else who's here, parents, coaches. We have some sponsors. We have some media. Uh, we have also some Monica Foundation uh, staff here. My family is here and certainly thank you to Lake Nona for hosting. Um, we have a few things uh, that we're going to do. I'm not, I'm not going to keep you here that long because I know you've had a long day. And, uh, but I do wanted to share a few pointers maybe that you can use tomorrow or some other time and just kind of share some of my stories, uh, a little bit of my experience and just hit some, some shots. Uh, but then I'm also going to invite a few of you to hit uh, just so that you get to see another swing and some other thoughts. Ava, you get ready. Because um, defending champion. Um, so I would love to do that. Um, I'm actually, I, I'm wearing a DeWiz. DeWiz is a partner of mine, um, which is, will be tracking every shot I'm hitting just for fun, just for some data. Uh, and just for reference, it's, a, it's a, 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 as you can see, a, a variable device. Uh, but we're also giving it away to who, whoever is sharing the most profile card on Cat Fraction. Cat Fraction, I know many of you have signed up and shared your profiles, but that's the price for, for doing that. Um, but it tracks a lot of different shots and the people are here if you're interested to hear about that in case you're wondering why I got this on my wrist. So anyway, I thought I'd just uh, kind of hit a few shots. Um, everybody knows it's the importance of, of warming up. Can you hit, hear me okay? I feel like I'm swallowing this thing. Um, so I'm just going to hit a few shots and uh, you know when you come out on a day like today, as you know, when you warm up, it's like, okay, well, you need to have a purpose of your warm up, really have a purpose of your practice. And my purpose right now is, you know, I just want to find the rhythm, finding the tempo. You know, when it's this cold and if you don't have enough clothes on, um, you know, it's, it's easy to swing fast and kind of just get rid of the shots. But therefore, I'm going to start with my short shots. And I know many of you already have uh, practice routines, but I always start with, you know, the shorter yeah, shots when I get to the range. My warm up routine in general is an hour and 15 minutes. And I do that every single time, whether it's a practice run, whether it's a, a tournament on, on you know, Thursday or Sunday, an hour and 15 minutes. So if you don't have a warm up routine yet, I think, you know, it's um, start thinking of one, start thinking about what can you do to make sure that you are as ready as you possibly can be when you get to the first tee. You know, when I started to figure out my warm up routine, you know, I would be so excited. I get on the LPGA and I'd be warming up for two hours, two and a half. And I thought, and then all of a sudden I get to the tee, I'm like, I'm worn out. So two and a half hours is a little too much for me. And then I kind of adjusted and then I did about 15 minutes and 15 minutes and then I was rushing. So that wasn't good either. So kind of find something that works for you. So for me, an hour and 15 minutes, that gives me plenty of time to take my time on the putting green, to chip some, hit some bunker shots, and then go hit some shots on the range and then have time for maybe a, a quick uh, restroom stop. But some, just find something. And the reason why you want to have a warm-up routine is because it's not just about getting loose. It's not just about, okay, you can hit shots, but finding the tempo, but then also starting to get your mind ready. As you know, golf is not just a physical sport. It's, it's a mind sport. You know, the mind is so powerful. So you want to make sure that you have time for yourself to go to get ready, whether you're starting to think about the shots that you're going to play, you know, if you can visualize right now, you're standing there on the first tee at Eagle Creek tomorrow, you know, just think about the shots that you need. So that's why I think, you know, having a good warm up routine is important for that reason too, so that you don't think about what you need to do later in the day or, you know, don't occupy your mind with things that you did earlier on or something else. And so you need to get your mind ready. You need to get your mind in the golfing mind. Okay. So I'm going to hit a few shots. Um, what's good when you, you know when you practice and, and a lot of this stuff you know so this is more just a reminder just more something for you to you know to just kind of get back to is when you work on something on the range even before a round or just you know you're having a practice session is to make sure that you have some targets okay um, I can go up here and I can hit all day long but if I don't have any targets you know you go back on the course it's like well, where am I going? Well, I assume you're going forward, but you want to have a little more specific target. So in this case, 
then move me all the way back to the end so the flags are way up there so but I'm going to aim at this flag that you can see in front there and the reason why I want to have that is because that's really what I've been doing on the golf course so as you know the club place is really where you want to start the body is parallel to that so I'm just going to hit a few shorter shots and trying to find the rhythm and what's you know when you're practicing on a day like today it's like the ball gets in the air and then the wind just kind of takes it everywhere so I think that you know when you warm up here is okay focus on where is the ball starting is it starting in the direction you want and then don't really pay attention too much where it's going unless you want to get a feel for how strong the wind is so that it can help you when you get out to the first on the first hole but here it's more about is the ball starting where i want it to start you know distance wise i'm not going to worry too much because it's obviously very windy but it's getting the body loose it's starting kind of where i want it and i'm just going to hit a few wedges like this so um, if you have any questions, actually, it's more fun for questions. So if you have any questions, something you want to share, maybe a routine that you have that works well or something that I say that doesn't make sense, feel free to raise your hand and we can have a little interaction in this crowd here. So, you know, again, you know, when I'm warming up here, a lot of it is tempo. Um, I have a few swing thoughts that I'm working on because I'm, I'm going to be playing this week too. And you know, whoever wins, this tournament that you guys are playing in, I'll be competing against you. So I think that'd be fun. I'm going down. I know I'm going down. I love, I love the attitude, but that's why I need to focus too. I got to have a little, you know, a little focus on my game and because I know the competition is going to be really, really hard. So, all right. So I'm going to, I have 14 clubs just like you do in your bag. You know, I have three wedges. I have a 60 degree. And then I have a, a 54 and a 48. I'm trying to figure out where my 48 is here. And then I have a pitching wedge. My longest iron is a five iron. And then I have a hybrid four, five wood, three wood, and then a driver and then a putter. So that's kind of my setup. Uh, I've had that for quite some time. Uh, but during my you know, active professional career, I would change a little bit back and forth, depending on what course I was playing and kind of the conditions. You know, at one point I had a a seven wood that was very useful um, and then at one point I had a four iron and so I've kind of changed a little bit but this is kind of the setup that I think works the best for me um, how many wedges do you guys have in your bag what's five wow what are those lofts Okay, that's good. Yeah, yeah. But as long as you know how far you hit them, right? That's all that matters. I mean, it really doesn't matter what it says on the club as long as you good that you know what you have. And so, do you have a lot of what's the longest wedge than carry wise? I mean, that so you go up to what 120? 130. Oh yeah, you're young and strong. That's right. And some days it doesn't go 130 yeah that's good well it's good i like that you're a little you know i mean that's the thing with golf every day is so different right you think you got it and the next day you're like where did it go so you kind of have to go with the flow a little bit but i think it's important to um you know to know what kind of clubs you have and you know depending on the course that you're playing so um talk about what do you want to come and hit some of mine while we're t no yeah come on you know when you know, there's some responsibilities when you win tournaments. When you're defending champion, you gotta, you gotta do a little bit. So, which one do you want to hit? I only have four to choose from. You want to hit this one? 48. All right. I know. I know. Thank you. All right. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have you warm up a little bit, and then we have a little competition. Okay. Do you need a glove? All right, all right, all right, all right. Anything else? Can I get you a, in a glove? Here's a go. No? Okay. Can I get you a lemonade or? Actually, I just had Chick-fil-A. Oh, you have Chick-fil-A. Okay. Is it too small? Well, let me see. Yeah, I'm just a medium. Okay. You, okay. Yeah. All right. And you know what? If I don't do well, I have an excuse. Right? There you go. Okay. <laughs> well, anybody wants a glove? There you go. All right. That's from Avery. She can sign it later. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
All right, where are we going? How about the flag over there? Yeah, I always have a target in mind. Let's hit a few shots. I'm going to continue with my tempo. And um, do you have any swing thoughts in mind today or no? Okay, well, we like to see it. A little more shallow and a push, push draw. I don't know if she's going to show up right now, but... All right, well, I, I'm going to give you... You have a few balls to warm up, and I'm going to warm up here, too. All right, we say closest, didn't we? <laughs> okay, well, thanks for coming, Avery. <laughs> Oh, all right. Let's do it again. <laughs> did you uh, did you hit a lot of wedges today? Uh, I did, yes. Yeah. All of them are what? Oh, really? You knockdowns? Yeah. Well, you live in Texas, don't you? Right. Yeah. That's what, that's what so this is probably your type of weather. I love the weather. Yeah. So uh, maybe you can show them. Can you show them how you hit a low shot? Or at least okay. tell us how would you, let's say I've never hit a low shot in my life. What would you tell me? What do I need to do? No, I did not expect to Up here? <laughs> oh. Yeah, well, I know you. So this is about right? Okay. And it's also, um, you know, you don't have to climb all along the place. It's just whatever swing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
How do you hit a low shot when you're teeing up the ball? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know if everybody heard the question was sometimes when you hit a wet shot a little lower, it feels like it's just falling out of the air, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, that's it's a very good question. To me, I think it's very important to be committed to the shot. You know what I mean? Like commit. Sometimes when we're in between shots, you know, like right here, like I have a little too much club to the first one. So if I want to hit a little shorter shot, I, sometimes I feel like I'm babying the shot. Then I feel like the ball is just really there's nothing to it. So for me, I try to do, be a little bit more shorter backswing, accelerate through and be more consistent, be more determined and be more aggressive, even though I'm trying to hit a little shorter. Because uh, otherwise, I feel like they just kind of fall out of there. Does that answer your question a little bit? Yeah, so to add to that, um, when you're, say, in between clubs, mm -hmm. um, now this is a situation, but would you, with uh, your people now, like, play a lockdown and more club as a thing, or do you just go out? Absolutely. I, I, you know, the wind is, especially today, is so strong. And I feel like the wind has more power over me than I have over the wind. So I like to play with the wind, you know, use the wind as, as your friend if you can. So, you know, to answer your question, I, I think, you know, if the wind is right to left, number one, you know, I would play to the right and let the wind take it. You know, if it's the opposite, I would do that. Some players, for example, if the wind is right to left, they would, they would kind of cut the ball into the wind. So in this case, the wind is left to right, they were trying to hook it and work against the wind. I've always felt like that's really difficult. So for me, I'd rather just play five or 10 yards, depending on how strong the wind, and trying to hit a straight shot and then kind of do the wind. Um, and so, you know, if it's really strong, it's just play with the wind. Use it more as a, as a friend than trying to fight it. So um, that's kind of my, my tip on that. Okay. Let's hit a few more and then we move up and I'm gonna give you a break Avery when you're when you have beaten me closest to the flag. <laughs> wow, the, how much room do you need? The ball is only this big. You need a room room? Oh, okay. Well I had some. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I like the way you hit that. Nice. Come on, get closer. Oh. I think you beat me there. Yeah, I think you did. You're a good sport. You're very good sport. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck tomorrow. All right. Anybody else? Uh, where is Maya? I should have. Oh. Maya, you want to come up? She doesn't want to come up. Okay. Uh, Yana, you want to come up? Please. Yeah. While Yana's warming up, she's just a few strokes back. Wonderful tomorrow. Um, you've been many shots ahead. You've been ten shots behind and come back and won an LPJ event. What's a different mindset that you could maybe give them a little advice? I know you guys have all been there, but what do you think? Six yeah, back I'd be happy to share. Do you need to warm up for you? What do you want to? Another something else? I do. <laughs> <laughs> I better do. I better have one here. Yeah. I'll let you warm up while I answer the question. You can hit whatever you want later. Um, yeah, so the question, like Mike said, what, what's the mindset of, of leading by many or just the mindset of coming into the last day? You know, I'm, first of all, I'm a, I'm a leader, uh, leaderboard watcher, meaning I look at the leaderboard all the time because I like to know where where am I, where am I standing, what, what, what are the scores like, what do I need to do, or what do I... You know, do you play aggressive or do you try to just kind of be more, a little bit more conservative? But, you know, I've been lucky to be in a lot of different um, positions coming into the last round. But I, I'm going to tell you that one thing you got to do, especially if you're playing well, don't feel like you have to do something different. Don't feel like you have to change what you're doing because you're up, if you're up there on the leaderboard, you're doing something right. I feel like a lot of people, the first time they're in the kind of in the last group or you know towards the end they feel like they have to step up the game like Sunday play like Sunday play is something different I like to say that you play you have Sunday play or Sunday game every day just playing your best that you can so really trust your ability trust what you're doing and let the other players kind of do the mistakes so that's if you're doing really well if you're up there at the top and and um, 
you know, just, just trust yourself. Go out there and keep in mind that a lot of players get nervous. You're not the only one, you know. I don't know about you, but when you get nervous, how do you, how do you feel? Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. It depends. Okay, but if you, let's pretend you are nervous. How do, I mean, do you feel it in your stomach or do you, like I get sweaty palms. Yeah, like a little sweaty. Do you feel like your heart, you have, your heart is uh, be beating a little extra, a little faster sometimes? So what do you do? How do you handle nerves? Focus on your breath, uh-huh. So kind of calm down or slow down a little bit? Mm-hmm. Okay, very good. And that's it, and it works? Go back to what you know. I think that's really good uh, Good advice. Go back to the basics. Um, you know, I would I would feel it in my stomach, some butterflies, you know, my, I would get a little sweaty palms. Um, and actually, I would be doing things a lot faster. Like, I have a routine, but I would just speed up, and I, I go faster, I talk faster. So I would always have to calm down, you know, feel like you're really working in slow motion to stick to that routine and and uh, and not trying to do things I haven't done before but I think it's really important to understand that it's okay to be nervous it's okay uh, a lot of people get nervous uh, I think the only thing is to know what to do uh, like some players they get nervous and what they do is they take so much time like their routine is you know a lot longer and they try and you know test the wind and they test five times it's like well it's going this direction trust yourself you know pull the trigger you know make a and uh, you know make a decision and then commit and we'll talk about you know the routine in a little bit but i think it's okay to talk about when you do get nervous that it that it's okay um we talked about being in the lead and then let's talk about what it, if you're not in the lead well you know how do you you know how do you approach the last day of a competition when obviously when you're not you have to you know trying to play as well as you can trying to climb up that leaderboard and really focus on on maybe being a little bit more aggressive you know, try and maybe go for the flags a little bit more. Hopefully you, you're playing decent enough that you can do that, but you know, you have nothing to lose. You know, just kind of go out there and trust yourself. And it's like anything, you gotta hit one shot at a time. Um, I enjoyed coming from behind. I love being that little train. Choo-choo, I'm coming behind you. I'm coming here, so keep looking. Uh, and just kind of keep climbing up there and, and keep in mind it's never over until it's over. You know. If we only played 16 holes, there would be a lot of different names on these trophies, but we play 18 holes, or 54 in this case. So just keep on playing, um, never give up. Just keep on believing in yourself, and because um, you never know what can happen. Um, I came from, like Mike said, one time I came from 10 behind. I played in Los Angeles, and I was 10 shots behind, which you would think, like, okay, this is not going to happen. But I had a good back nine, and all of a sudden, Things changed, and, and I ended up winning in the playoffs. So keep that in mind, whatever you can do until until it's over. So are you warmed up? You just hit one <laughs> shot, I was going to say. And I'm getting cold, so I better warm up here, too. We're going to hit a few um, mid-irons, and you have a wedge, and then we'll talk about some of the things here. Any questions, anybody? Yes. Mm-hmm. Good question. How, you know, to play, you know, top golf consistently for a long time, what's the key? Well, I, I think, again, we talked a little bit about routines, you know, doing the same thing every time, finding that, that atmosphere or that mindset of just being very comfortable and by doing the same routine that helped me. Um, I also just played to my strengths, you know, meaning when I'm on a golf course, I just play the shots I know how to play. This is when I get to the driving range or the putting range. This is where I work on shots I don't really know. So I'm, I'm not much of a risk taker on the golf course. Uh, you might think, you know, it's boring to hit fairways and greens, but I didn't get bored of that. That was my goal. I just want to have fairways and greens. The more I can hit, the better, because it gave me a peace of mind, and I have to be everywhere and try and experiment. So I think you need to find the way that you play to, you know, kind of towards your personality, feeling comfortable. And then also, it's important. That was a good shot. Um, important to be able to balance your life when it comes to competition, when it comes to training, and when it comes to rest. So when you are playing, that you are there, that you are rested, their body is ready to go. You know, a lot of people just play and play and play, and then they, 
kind of get tired and then get into bad ha habits and it's hard to break those. So just kind of find, play when you're ready uh, is important. And the, the other thing I would say is, is keep on working. You know, it's really important to have goals. You know, set up goals early in the year, whether it comes to golf, whether it comes to school, whether it comes to whatever, just have goals, something that would just kind of guide you and moving forward. It looks good. You got good tempo. Yeah, you happy? Well, you played pretty well. <laughs> Maybe, is there something you wanna share that you did today that was good or the last few days or working on something that, that you're excited about? Okay, a little higher on the face, hands more front. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it sounds good, it looks good, yeah. You do it with every club or just the irons? All your wedges and eight and nine, okay. Well, let's see. Do you need a glove, by the way? You okay? All right. She wants a lemonade? Okay. <laughs> Actually, hot chocolate would be nice. That's super solid. I think it works. Yeah, I think that works. You want to hit something longer? Oh, yeah. Whatever you want. We, we're here to have fun. Just talk a little bit. Get a seven iron. Perfect. I'm going to hit a few eight irons. Any other questions? No? You guys good? Okay, where are we gonna go? You wanna pick another target? What about that one over there? Is that good? Okay, I'm gonna... You gotta stay warm in this weather. Keep swinging. All right. So when I line, I don't know about you, Yana, but I always take a little um, intermediate target. You take something in front of you, a few feet to line up the club. Very good. I'm gonna find something here. Of course, it's such good shape, so it's like I gotta pick a divot or something that stands out. And at the club. I think you should be hitting eight, and I should be hitting seven. <laughs> <laughs> you wanna take some off? Well, I need to add some. Maybe you all can blow at the same time. Give me some distance. Anyway, I'm gonna focus on my tempo. A little smoother. Almost. So do you have a, a pre-shot routine? We talked about warm-up routine. Pre-shot routine is something that I, stress a lot and how do you prepare for each <laughs> shot do you have something you want to share yeah yeah a field swing okay mm -hmm. okay Oh, staying down a little bit longer? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So you do it gradually. First it's more like a drill to get the right feel and then you, okay. And then you go behind the ball. Okay, and then you put the club down, okay? Do you practice swing, but with the ball? So this is something, you, you said you do them differently. So if you had a wedge in your hand, would you kind of not do the same thing then? Or a driver, whatever, what, what makes it different?
Okay. Mm -hmm. So you, you're focusing a little bit on, on your swing, like a little technique thought, right? The set, and then you go up. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Um, you know, what I do is, I think I've showed some of you this before, but I know we have a, a crowd of a, a few new people. So if you stay with me. So what I like to do is, um, I like to divide my part into two parts. Uh, can everybody see? This is where the ball is. This is what I call the play box. This area here is where I call the think box. How many of you have heard this one? Okay, so you cannot answer the question. <laughs> what do we do in the play box? Play, yeah. What do we do in the think box? Think, yeah. How many of you play in the think box? Or vice versa, how many think in the play box? I used to be one of those. I used to think in the play box. So what this does to me is, you know, you're allowed to think in golf. You just make sure that you think in the right area. So you can think in the think box. And what would we think about? Any thoughts? I'm sorry? I can hear, sorry. Technique? Um, I don't like to do technique, but if you want to think technique before, you can, but yeah. Yeah, what kind of shot? Is it important to know how far it is? Yes. Is it important to know where the wind is? Yeah. Is it important to know if it's uphill or downwind? Or So there's a lot of things to think about, but just make sure that you do it in your think box, you know, the most important parts. What club do you want to have? What kind of shot you want to hit? And once I've decided, let's say it's 140 over there, I'm not sure how far it is, but I got my day on here. I'll be in my think box. I will take a little practice swing, and I would feel my shot, like I'm feeling 140. And then I'm seeing 140 I can see this beautiful iron right and then the last part what I would do is I would hear it and what you know how do you hear a shot well first of all you you want that nice sound that you heard from Jan over there that it's like really taking off and then you might even want to think that you're hearing some claps maybe even can hear the ball going in the reason why I say all these things is because I want it to be positive. I want it to, you know, I want you to have a great vision. I want you to visualize the best eight iron you've ever hit. There's no use of visualizing a crappy one, right? Don't visualize the one that, you know, the worm burner, or whatever you would hit. Just visualize this beautiful eight iron. Take a little practice swing and feel it, see it, and then hear it. And this, you know, my practice here is, you know, 24 seconds. So I do everything here for 20 seconds. And then I walk over this this club, which is normally an imaginary line. And once I'm over here, this is where I play because I'm in the play box. This is not where I think. I'm going to take my decision and I'm going to commit into the play box. So what I do is I take my setup, you know, whatever. I do a few waggles because, you know, there's a little tension always. And then trust my decision and execute. And then... Maybe it didn't turn out to my best eight iron, but you know, it, you have hit it, I committed. And that's really, I do this all the time. Whether it's a putt, whether it's a chip, whether it's a bunk shot, you know, last drive at a US Open. And the reason why I do this is go back to a little bit what Avery asked, how do you play golf at the higher le highest level? How do you be so consistent? I do this all the time. And that's so, when, you know, Jana, when you're doing your routine, I think it's really important, you know, this works for me, this works for her. You know, find your routine so that when you have people watching, when you have, you know, something on stake like Annika Invitational tomorrow, you know, focus on the things you need to focus. Don't focus on everything around you. You know, that's when we get nervous, when we focus on, you know, our parents are watching, our friends watching, our, you know, I got other players and coaches, you know, stay in your routine bubble, stay in your game so you can hit one shot at a time and not focus on anything else it's so easy to start thinking about the second shot on 17 or you know some of us might go back and think about oh, that 
that drive ahead on number three, you need to stay in the moment. You need to stay here right now in the shot that you're going to hit. And I think it's really important to have a routine. So if you don't have a pre-shot routine, get one and figure out, you know, what do you need to do so you can hit great shots all the time? You know, the question be, well, how do I figure out what I need to do? Do I do this way or do I do this way or what do I do? Well, when you play well, think about what you're doing. Because when you're playing well, you're doing something right. Okay, so make notes, whether you're officially making notes or making notes in your mind, think about things, what am I doing that's working so well? And then when you're not playing so well, say, okay, what am I doing that's not going so well? And eventually you figure out, you, you, know, you remove all the things that doesn't work and then you just do the things that work. And that's how you create routines so that you can repeat consistent golf every single day. Okay, so you're getting cold. It's just me. Uh, do you want to sit down? Does anybody else want to come and hit some drives for me? Because I'm shaking too. Anybody? Anybody feel like hitting some drives? Three woods? Five woods? Yeah, come up. I have 14 clubs. Anybody else? Uh, five woods. You want to hit drivers? Driver? Here we go. Yes. Yeah, you need a glove? <laughs> I'm a medium. We figured out I'm a medium. You're not picky. Here. Anything else? Let's see if I have one more. Yeah, I think I have one more. Oh, this one? I know, I mean, that's... When you get older, a lot of things become smaller, so... Um, <laughs> Only you're that big. You want to hit here? I'm going to go over there and hit a three foot. Oh, this is a five foot. I don't need it. Okay, where are you going? You going straight? Forward and straight. I love that. Okay, that's a good start. Well, maybe you can pretend, take two flags and pretending is a fairway over there. Okay, first one and on the left. Okay. You want to have an introduction or you're good? Yeah. Okay. We haven't warmed up. That was pretty good. What did you shoot today? Way too many. Okay. So tomorrow, what kind of mindset are you going to have tomorrow? Go back to doing your thing. Okay. Well, it's okay. This is how we learn. You know, we learn every day. How about that one? How about 14 of those tomorrow? One, see? I'm gonna hit a few here. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that was bad. <laughs> I was hoping they were looking at you. <laughs> I gotta work on coming through the ball. That's a good pass there. All right. Do you like that driver? It's pretty good, huh? Yeah, I know. He hasn't seen that distance in a while, so I'm glad you're, <laughs> you're telling the driver he can fly a little further. Yeah. Well, you just played a dog leg right, a dog leg left there. Yeah. Yeah. Be, uh, I know there's quite a few deer around here. For floor, I, I don't know, but we have a lot here. Does anybody have any questions? Hey, Bri, uh, you want to add some more? Oh no. All right. Yeah, where's the watch? Are you guys ready? Do it. We're gonna get, I'm gonna take it off. I'm gonna give it to her. Uh, just like a watch, yeah. I have a watch on. I don't have a watch on. 
Thank you. Here, here's, uh, here's the, the whiz. Here's the, the wizard. I did, I did have a question. Yes. Question. Okay. Yes. Oh, super question. Like, what do you do in between rounds, really? I think it's, did everybody hear the question, what to do between rounds? I think it's a very good uh, question because I think it's important to turn it off. Turn it off, meaning when you're done with a round, if you want to analyze it, if you want to practice a little bit, do that. But then at some point you have to shut it off. You know, you have to shut it off. Uh, you know, when you're tired and your mind, you just can't do it, you know, 24-7. So go watch a movie, read a book, listen to music, whatever you like. Kind of just recharge. I always tell people, when your phone is dead, what do you do? You recharge. You need as a person to recharge. So do something so that you're ready tomorrow. And then, you know, when you wake up in the morning, then you can start turning it on again. But it's hard to be boom, boom, boom. Okay? Okay? Are you ready to go? She's going to take everybody down. Sure. Well, it has to be straight, too. <laughs> <laughs> You're out? <laughs> well, you have to give the old lady a chance. All right, I'm going to sit down and watch. How are you? Thanks for coming. Oh. Not so much a shock, <laughs> but instant feedback. Instant feedback. Yeah. Already. So. So are you negotiating? You want to move a few yards up? Is that what you're talking about here? Do you want to play the red tees? No. no. Well, you do hit it far. It's nice. All right. <laughs> we'll give you one more. Challenge is on. <laughs> All right. My turn. Yes. Yes, I'm. If, well, and you have a chance to win. Remember, whoever shares most card for action profiles will get one of these tomorrow. Or to, as we do tonight, we're handing it out. So, all right. I got to think of everything I have, every experience I've ever made, positive, everything I have. Because to be these, ready? Think box. Play box, rip it. <laughs> what was that? Hand speed, whoa, 25. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, any questions? <laughs> Are you hungry? 
we, you know where we're going? You're going in a bus to Boxy Park, and then we're gonna <laughs> do a little bit um, about more than golf. So you will hear a little bit more from me, but make sure we feed your bellies and keep you warm. But thank you for your participation. Thanks for being here. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you to everybody for coming. Thank you. Thank you.